Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Danny. I work with Professor Raghunathan Rengasamy in the Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Madras. I work in the area of droplet microfluidics, and today I'm going to talk about dynamics of drops in 2D microchannels. So this is basically a fluid flow problem, but it's very different from what we've been looking at in this uh, complex system school. It's, going to, it's actually flow in very small channels, uh, where channel diameter is less than a millimeter, and very small amount of fluid. So basically, the Reynolds number associated with these flows are very small. In fact, it's less than one. So it's called the creeping flow regime. You, uh, and you will find that the inertia terms or the nonlinear terms in the governing equations do not, are insignificant. So you have fluid flowing through these small channels. So when you send in two liquids that, are, that do not mix with each other, like oil and water, you will see that one of the phases breaks into a drop and the other flows continuously. So I call the fluid that flows continuously as the continuous phase. The one that breaks as a drop is the droplet phase. And these drops can now function as small reactor reaction environments. They can isolate uh, active entities. So basically, you can manipulate these drops inside these channels. You can merge them, split, synchronize, sort, and even incubate these drops. So basically, you're able to do all this. So you, the idea is to carry out processes, which you generally do in a lab, on a very small chip that will contain these channels. But designing any of these channels would require information or knowledge of how these drops will move inside these channels, how they will interact with other drops, and so on. But because of the nonlinear interaction, as you will see later, they will form different collective. They show different collective behavior, which makes design non-intuitive. So in this talk, I'm going to show some of the non-intuitive collective behavior that you see. So here is a 2D microchannel. I call this 2D because drops are free to move in this 2D space. They're constrained by the walls on the direction perpendicular to the board. So now you ha when drops enter this channel, because of the diverging geometry, they slow down. And then they speed up in the converging section of the channel. So when you increase the rate at which they come in, they form different patterns depending on the flow rate. So this is the process of self-organization inside this microchannel. So here's another example. So when you operate with such a large uh, concentration of drops in a microchannel, you can have what is called a propagated coalescence, where one coalescence event triggers an avalanche of similar events, which destabilizes the entire assembly. So the idea here is to understand how these drops behave in the channel so that we can model them or design systems for any application of interest. Yes. Uh, they can be water and oil or oil and water. They will both show this behavior. So it's not about the chemistry that's related. So what we know is that drops form 2D arrangements in channel. There are nonlinear interactions between drops that result in a lot of interesting complex traffic. And drops can catastrophically destabilize uh, as they flow in the channel. So from an engineering perspective, there are a lot of inverse problems that we are interested in, like if I want a certain pattern of choice, how should I send drops in? Or if I have two different drops, how will they uh, arrange themselves in an assembly of drop? And what does the complex traffic has to do with the way drops enter or exit? And of course, like how do you pack drops to either make the emulsion more stable or destabilize it? So we know that the design problem is hard because all these because of the complex two reasons. One is the complex behavior of drops themselves because of the nonlinear interactions that ultimately lead to a collective behavior. And also, it's a large combinatorial problem. For example, if you take even a simple uh, problem like how should I send drops, and let's say I have five drops, how should I send them into a channel to make a certain pattern? There are so many different ways in which you can send them in. And also, there are so many different ways in which you can design your channel um, into which you're going to send it. So it's a large combinatorial problem. So you need a systematic design approach to understand the design of these micro devices. Uh, and typically, these systematic approaches would involve solving an optimization problem, which will ultimately give you a solution to your design problem. So now, you need models for flow, which have to be incorporated to these optimization routines. And these models have to be, have, uh, should take less time for computation. So you can't use the uh, classic uh, Navier-Stokes-based models. You should go for something much more simpler than them. So that is where I come in. So we propose an agent-based uh, approach to understand pattern formation. So here, the idea is simple. You break the complex system into a group of interacting agents. 
Here, the agents will be the drops themselves. Now, these drops interact with other drops and with the continuous phase, which is surrounding it, and with the boundary. So once you identify these interactions, you uh, write simple phenomenological models to understand them. So you get these rules or models for the interactions. Then you put all this information together in a multi-agent simulation and simulate the whole system. So for the case where drops are self-organizing, we identify that there are three principal interactions. One is the interaction with the continuous phase, which is basically the drag. Then when drops move very close to each other, because of the drainage flow between the drops, there'll be this lubrication force, which is also present when drops approach a wall. So we identify these interactions, then we model them using their asymptotic cases, like flow past a sphere or an unbounded flow and so on. We use those functional forms, we model them, and then we put them into a multi-agent simulation, which basically solves the Newton's second law for all the drops together. Now, as I told earlier, the flow uh, regime we are in is very small Reynolds number. So you have acceleration playing insignificant role. So you might as well make the, bring about those approximations, which will make the equations even more simple. So this is, on the right, what you see is a MATLAB simulation of the pattern formation of drops in a 2D channel. So you see the drops slow down in the diverging section and speed up in the converging section, like in the experimental uh, result here, to form the one layer arrangement. Now when you increase the rate at which drops come in, they start to crowd at the diverging section, and then they undergo what is called a layering instability, which, because of this uh, uh, crowding, and they form the two layer arrangement as they move in the channel. Now, with further increase in the flow rate, you see that drops first crowd, break into two layers, and the, even the two layer will become unstable, and then it forms the three layer arrangement, and as the drops move in the channel. See, a lot of interesting uh, features are mapped by these models. You see that the uh, inner layer, the zigzag nature of the inner layer, the way in which the drops break and so on are exactly as seen in the experiments, which is very interesting because the models we used for these interactions are very simple in nature, but they are still able to capture this collective behavior. So we were also able to see qualitatively you know, low, higher layers in the system with higher flow rates. So now I would like to introduce a design problem at this point. So let's take a simple example to illustrate. So I consider two different drops in the system. So the drops, are, I call them A and B. So A and B are different simply because, let's say, the composition is different. Now let's say I'm uh, designing a device where I will have to pack a lot of these drops together. Now the question is, how should I send drops A and B inside, and what sequence should I send them inside, so that I either get a good mix of A and B in the system, or they are well separated. So this is interesting from an engineering perspective because let's say you're designing an incubator and then you want, you're sending in both these drops A and B, you will either want to reduce the mass transfer between the two drops. There's, there'll be diffusional transfer of solute between the two drops. So you either want to reduce it or maximize it. So the question is how do you go about it? So let's say you take 100 drops of A and 100 drops of B. The intuitive solution for minimum contact is simple. So you simply take uh, send the A drops first, followed by B. So only the intersection here will there be any uh, mass transfer. For maximum contact, you would uh, intuitively suggest that you have to send a drop of A followed by B and so on into the channel. So now what we do in the study is basically understand whether this will in fact give you what you're looking for. Will sending drops one after the other actually give you a good mix of drops inside the channel? So we take a simple self-organizing system, like the diverging, converging channel, and then we send in the drops, and we assume for uh, simplicity's sake that A and B flow the same way. So when you send in drops one after the other, you see that because of the layering instability, it pushes drops of uh, drop A up and drop B down. Because of this, you see a horizontal stratification that happens. So what you thought would intuitively work for the system actually does not work. It gives you in fact, the worst possible um, arrangement inside the channel. So the, now that you understand what happens in the layering, you can simply uh, use it to your advantage. You send in two drops of A followed by two drops of B. We found that this sequence is much better in giving you 
um, a well mixed uh, arrangement inside the channel when compared to a lot of different sequences which we tried. So the, it's because when you, when you send in 2A followed by 2B, it will so happen that a pair of AB will go up and a pair of AB will go down. And as a result, there's always an A near B, so which results in good mix of drops. So another thing that we tried was when you send in n drops of A followed by n drops of B, where n equals the number of layers in your system, you actually find that these drops arrange in such a way that they give you vertical stratification of drops. You'll see in some time that these drops will start to arrange in a vertical you know, layers. So the point to take from this is droplet motion inside 2D channel is complex. So even the simplest self-organizing system shows non-intuitive behavior. And it's a very large combinatorial problem because given a number of drops of A and B, there are so many different ways you, in which you can send these drops in. Um, so and also, let's say if you take the real problem, which is the design and operation of an incubator, it's a much harder problem to solve because the self-organization in those cases are much more complicated with a lot of um, mixing and so on. So, and drops A and B may flow differently themselves. So, all this points to the fact that you need a systematic approach for design, which will be an optimization route to solving these problems. So, we have tried one such problem. So, we asked the question, how sh let's say I, have, uh, I want to make a, a circular particle. So, there is a, actually a method to do it. So, you s organize these drops in a circular patch, and then you shine some light on it, probably UV or something, and they all fuse to form that particle shape. So we ask the question, if I want a certain particle shape, how should I send these drops in? So by solving an optimization problem, we actually find that, find how we should send these drops in uh, so that they arrange in a circular particle. Here is another example which was solved. This gives you a triangular particle. So now a lot of interesting things come about from this work. You also find out that you need to have an inert drop to make this particle and so on. So a lot of these uh, degree of freedom analysis and so many things come out of the problem as you work through it. So to conclude, so we have complex droplet motion in 2D microchannels, and you have, we have proposed agent-based models to understand these uh, interactions and the global behavior. We also see that the complex behavior of drops makes design non-intuitive. So we believe that by incorporating our models, into optimization, as I demonstrated earlier by that particle synthesis problem, we will be able to solve much larger class of problems, which will involve a lot of non-intuitive designs and so on. With that, I would like to thank you all. <laughs>